I'm hoping that these uh, that the picture comes out there. Um, today I'm wearing the uh, the B5000 TFC, the, the Porter, and uh, so this has the DLC coating and uh, what I've noticed is that it has a, a gunmetal grey uh, colour to it. Now it does have the, um, uh, the, the bracelet is DLC and uh, sometimes it looks a little uh, darker but I think that's because the bracelet is brushed and the case is polished and that's creating the, uh, the colour differential. But uh, I like it and uh, I do like the thin red line. And the other day I uh, was wearing uh, the B5000G, the, the black one. And that watch is uh, darker than this, uh, the, the DLC coated uh, TFC. Uh, but of course this uh, shares the, uh, the colors of the very original G-Shock Square because it has the uh, blue text, it has a touch of yellow text, and it has the, the, the thin red line that has been a, a common characteristic of the uh, G-Shock squares over time. And I, uh, I do like it. And uh, this is uh, one of the watches that often I, I wear over the MRG, uh, the black MRG with the thin red line. Uh, with the gold details because this is all all black really but it does have the, a splash of blue and uh, that is the water resist 20 bar at the bottom and um, it's so difficult <laughs> because I um, I would need uh, to put the uh, the camera down in fact I in fact I am going to do that I'll, I'll do that now what I've realized is I'm able to uh, put the camera down like this and, uh, and show you the watch. In fact, what a good idea. Why didn't I do that before? Uh, but because I've got two hands, I can actually uh, take the watch off. And um, I'm doing this in daylight, and that's the bit that I am hoping uh, the camera's rolling. Um, it's on some leaves, and um, I could see it tipping over. Ah, it's tipping over quite a bit. Okay. Um, it's not too bad. I, I, I'll, I'll tip over myself to match that. Um, it's literally not horizontal, it's, it's going over. Let me try and... Um, uh, yeah, I'm on uneven ground. That's made it worse. Ah, you see, you should never fiddle around. Let me try that. There we go. Uh, so, in this uh, uh, daylight, look at that. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the, the grey gunmetal DLC is coming through. And I think I have mentioned uh, that before uh, in another video. And I, I, I thought to myself when I made that video that I would um, uh, shoot another video uh, over time. And uh, I'm in my uh, Wellingtons here and uh, I'm, crouching, I'm crouching down. <laughs> uh, but look at that. Um, hopefully you can see what I can see. And in fact, if I put it up like that, look at that. And this is, uh, uh, in this daylight, uh, the, uh, the colour, uh, the, the colourway on the dial, uh, the, uh, the, the, because it has a bracelet. And I'm probably more of a bracelet person anyway. Um, am I more of a, a bracelet person? Uh, I thought I preferred leather straps. A while ago, and, uh, and then I, I thought I preferred rubber straps because you can put um, a rubber bracelet on this, but that rubber bracelet belongs to the um, negative display silver um, uh, case, and uh, I, I do have the rubber that rubber uh, bracelet, um, uh, but I also have the rubber bracelet for the B5000G. Uh, but the buckle is actually black ion plated uh, with, this, with this is DLC and it and the the color of it is a darker black uh, than the DLC It's very slight, but I, I did notice it and I have had that on that bracelet and I do like it um, As you may know uh, Casio have just announced that they're going to release the um, an MRG on the rubber band uh, in January 24. 
Uh, so, and the colorway is lovely. It's uh, I think it is uh, basically black, but with gold, de uh, gold detail. But it does have a black uh, back plate. Uh, but it does have the uh, the rubber strap with a, a deployment clasp. And I've got a feeling that uh, that will look super. And hopefully, I will have remembered to put a picture of that um, into the video right now. So hopefully, you can see that. Uh, but that's the MRG version of this, basically, um, uh, uh, with the rubber bracelet. I, and I, I really do like that. But coming back to the, the bracelets, um, I am a big fan of, uh, of the bracelets. In fact, um, one of the things I've been trying to understand is why I gravitate towards uh, uh, these um, full metal squares. And I'm going to pause for a moment. You know, it's uh, my legs. <laughs> <laughs> my legs are are hurting, um, and I wanted to explain why I keep going to these digital uh, G-Shock squares. In fact, if I stand back a little, there we go. Um, maybe that's too far away. Um, I'm more. I want to get the the watch in in shot, and um, uh, because I explained the other day very badly. I'm not very good at this, um, but I use the functions of this watch all the time. Uh, uh, there's the world time. I do use that. Uh, there is the uh, the alarm uh, function. There is the uh, stopwatch function. Use that all the time. And uh, but the the one thing I use the most is the countdown timer. I use that all the time. In fact, I'm going to actuate it right now. And if that goes off during the duration of this video, we know that I've been talking way too long because it's set for ten minutes. But that countdown function I use all the time. And then uh, I think it goes back to the time. Now on the uh, GMW B5000 um, uh, display, the module um, is, uh, it was upgraded uh, to the, uh, um, am I right saying it's the STN display, the super twisted display? Anyway, that's a technical term that um, is attached to the technology used to the display. And essentially what you're trying to achieve is, um, is your ability to uh, see the differential between the markings, the indication of the time and the detail against the, the back of the display. And I can tell you that these GMW B5000 displays are fabulous. But I think that they have recently upgraded the display because the module on the new carbon and uh, the new titaniums I think has changed again. Casio don't necessarily tell you what the, those details are, uh, but you can assume that there have been some changes. And because the display is such an important, the differential of this, uh, the, uh, the contrast of the display is such a, an interesting thing, and, um, uh, and, and there's a lot of value in that, I imagine that they keep updating that contrast to make it even clearer. But uh, in these, this module is really good. Uh, I don't have any problems reading the time uh, and the details, information on the display, on these modules, on the positive display. And uh, my preference is the positive display, uh, but I do like the negative display also. I like it, but it's not my favourite. And it's the only thing that I hesitate um, on with respect to the new carbon, because the two new carbons that have just been released, uh, they're both negative display, but they have a, a module update, and I'm hoping that they've increase the uh, contrast on the display and uh, it's a nice watch anyway anyway uh, you know I, I love the way Casio you know grab you by the short and curlies and keep you wondering what they're going to produce next because if I knew that if I if I was to learn that Casio are releasing a carbon with a positive display that's the watch that would be my preference uh, over the two that are available now anyway back to the porter and look at that it's so cool and uh, I do keep wearing this and I imagine that and this is the original color scheme of the original uh, G-Shock Square, uh, the DW5000, all the way back to 1983. You are looking at a watch that was designed in 1983. Uh, this design uh, uh, 
hasn't really changed. Uh, it's almost identical. The display has changed a little bit because the technology in the display has got better over 40 years. Uh, but the design of it is and the colour of it is identical uh, to what it was 40 years ago. And uh, so um, uh, this is called the Porter because it was released about three years ago now, I think, uh, in, a, in a bag made by Porter. And uh, so it was a limited run thing. Uh, so this has become, there's a jet aircraft overhead, you might be able to hear it. Yeah, and if, if it's very cool, I'll quickly, um, it's uh, above the clouds so you can't see it, but you might be able to hear a jet, it, totally cool. Anyway, uh, you can't see it because it's over the clouds. Anyway, um, uh, the Porter, uh, GMW B5000, uh, still one of my favorite watches and one of the watches that I seem to be wearing uh, all the time. I literally wear this um, uh, in a week. Yes, a lot of the time. Uh, but once again, I wear it to, uh, to show off really. I wear it, <laughs> there's no one here, but um, uh, I show off to myself. Um, I, 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 I like it, I just like it. And I keep uh, trying to understand what the psychology is with respect to wearing watches. And, uh, I, you know, we can probably work out, you know, why we wear them, because they look cool, it's a piece of jewellery. Um, it does have some function, and for me, that function I do use. Um, I use it all the time. And, uh, and once again, I think because it looks cool, that's also a, a jolly good reason uh, to wear these things. Um, but there you go. Uh, the, once again, the, the GMW uh, B5000 TFC Porter uh, DLC coating looks cool. And uh, I, I thought this lighting and, and the background, uh, you know, made it look for good. Anyway, there you go. My, le <laughs> my legs. Oh, oh, my legs are killing. And um, anyway, there you go. B5000 uh, TFC.